Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Spider Garage. This is officially... <laughs> you okay? Yeah. Officially, the thrash. As of this taping, we have officially 11 days until LS Fest. And so this is gonna be us and some friends coming by. Uh, just thrashing on this thing to see what we can get done. Less talking, more working. Uh, probably a lot of time lapses. So. Right now, Nathaniel's over here working on the roll bar that's gotta get welded in the car today, and then we're gonna make a crossbar for a five-part harness. We're still building an engine over there. As you can see, we don't uh, have enough done uh, with only 11 days left to go. So anyway, yeah, maybe the crossbar doesn't even happen. We're not too concerned. Yeah, yeah, that's the other thing is that we're actually in that decision-making process right now where we figure out what we really just have to have for LS Fest and what we can just work on later. And maybe that crossbar for our five point harness is gonna be a down the road project because I don't know that we're really gonna get this thing done uh, enough. I'll have to be at the show. Yeah, I think the goal right now is just to be there. We're not gonna compete in uh, grand champion like we thought because A, I don't think we'll qualify. We don't have side windows. We're probably not gonna have a five burnt harness now as well without the crossbar. Not only that, I don't know that it's gonna be safe enough to do that yet. We, it's, it's also not legal. And we don't even have title insurance on this thing yet because uh, it's an out-of-state title that was not given to us when we bought the car. And we found out that uh, it's going to take like four months uh, to get it not in time for the show. Anyway, all that being said, we got a lot to do. Hey, our friend Rusty's here today. I told you we had some help coming by and Rusty has not seen the car yet because I have kept it a secret and not posted anything online yet. And he's one of the first ones to get to see it. Color scheme. You like the color scheme? I do. Part of it's sitting out here in the yard because <laughs> we don't have room for it in the garage. It's a little big. <laughs> hey. Oh, yeah. I like that. <laughs> it's not done yet. We still no. got to paint the red, white, and blue across the hood and the top. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we haven't really posted it. We uh, haven't seen it yet. No. no yeah, that's just it. Yeah. No. I like Check it. out the wheels, dude. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, those are perfect. Yeah, and it turned out really well. Yeah. 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 Like if I stand in front of it. Yeah. Well, look at the difference between the uh, the new one and the old Corvette yeah. one. You thought Corvette rims were wide until you look at these. No, those are perfect, man. The stance, the width. Watch your uh, ankle on that stanchion right there. It'll slice you. Ask me how I know. <laughs> Now, it looks cool, but here's the problem. We only got 11 days to get that done. <laughs> kind of missing. There's a part missing. It's sitting there. Yeah, and we're waiting on new rings to come in now, yeah, too. Yeah. So. Apparently, I don't know how to gap. I messed up my two cents. 
stopped at O'Reilly to see if it might happen to have a set before I headed out, and it did not. Really? Because I figured if I could even grab just a stock set. Oh, that's what we were looking for online, yeah. yeah. That cheap set. Yeah, that's what I was like, I actually, whatever. This I point. bought the actual tool. It was, it was yeah. That won't come in for probably two or three days, though, yeah, right? Tomorrow, tomorrow as well? Yeah. Oh, sweet. <clears throat> yeah, he asked if I had the tool. I started to order one before I left Jags, but instead I bought a camshaft and uh, <laughs> for your yeah, truck. Set of lifters and rollers, and yeah. some aluminum heads, and yeah, yeah. priorities. Priorities. Find <laughs> yeah. the expensive parts that I can get a discount on first. All right, I need to explain what uh, Rusty's going to work on here today. I think the biggest help we can get from you today is to make some brake lines for this thing. Corvettes, as is, well, anybody that's familiar with Corvettes knows, there's an ABS system that sits in a hole right over there that I'm pointing at. We cut all that out. We just need to run manual lines to all four corners. And since I saws all them off from the center of the car, <laughs> we kind of need to make some new lines. So Rusty's going to do that. He's got this awesome hydraulic flaring tool which saves a lot of time. Yeah. And right now we're just trying to figure out the route. Luckily this is labeled front, rear. I think that looks like that's a proportioning valve that's built into that because there wasn't one anywhere else, which makes our job pretty easy. We just reroute them to each corner and we're golden. It should be good. Yeah. Piece of cake. Famous last words, right? <laughs> Point a minute job. Oh no, now we're gonna, now we're in for it. Oh, wow, just made it. Uh, no. Oh, well, yeah, you just keep pushing. <laughs> Man, this cribbing has come in, already come in pretty handy. Is the C-beam actually hooked up to it? No. Okay. Huge shout out again to Speedway Motors for this mock-up block, their solo swap engine block, and to their adjustable uh, block mounts because those things, other manufacturers only have, if you're lucky, they have maybe three bolt holes that you can adjust, maybe a couple inches back and another couple inches back. But in this case, I've got a transmission back there that bolts only in one spot to the Corvette C-beam. And so I need to be able to just slide it right back to where that transmission is. And I could only do that with these Speedway Motors mounts. So big shout out to them for the block and for the engine mounts. Just made our life a whole lot easier. All right, quick update before we go in to get something to eat. Rusty has, how far did you get? Uh, we just need some tees. I got one more line to flare in the back, other than that. So all four corners have brake lines run up to the front. We just don't have the T sections to tie them all together. Yep. You're awesome, dude. You were able to use 
<clears throat> some of the old line flare or uh, unioned into most, the new 316th line. Yeah, most of the old line I just repurposed and only needed, I don't know, about a six inch section of the, of the new stuff. So. Take one of them back. <laughs> we had two 50 foot rolls, I think. Two 25 foot rolls. Two 25 foot rolls. All right, I knew. 50 was a number in my head for some reason. Yeah, we probably will. So Rusty's got a good portion of her brake lines already done, ready to go. We had some bad news up here. We had a um, quick backstory. We've had three intakes for this thing. I'm not going to talk about them. I'm not going to show them to you because they're all either they either didn't make it because for whatever reason or we got to return them because they're just not going to fit. Now that we have a transmission lined up it's six inches underneath the cowl not only would we have to cut the cowl we'd have to cut the dashboard which is not going to work because that's where the windshield goes yeah so any that's tall this, intake we've got is not going to work this engine sits back a lot farther than i thought it would which is why we're having to redo that intake I didn't didn't factor that in no and thank goodness we were able to take the original transmission hook it up to the c-beam that's the only place that transmission will go. We were able to slide this thing block. back. Yeah, the mock-up block slid right imagine, up against it. Imagine if we got a couple days before, put the engine in, and then realized our intake didn't work. Oh, yeah. This mock-up block saved us <laughs> thousands of dollars. <laughs> so we'll find another intake. The other thing we found out that won't work is I had this really cool idea to make this thing look really retro. So I had these Holly uh, valve cover adapters to put retro small block adapter or small block valve covers on there but the tall ones will not work that hits the valve cover i'm sorry it hits the firewall over there i'll learn to talk eventually and because the engine sits so far back that actually hits the firewall a little bit too no big deal we'll notch that clearance at whatever but i think what we've really resigned ourselves to is that we're going to have to go with some kind of a low profile intake regular ls valve covers and any kind of a retro work we had um, hoped for is kind of out the window. The other thing I had that you haven't seen yet, so I had a fake distributor from Low Car that actually mounts to the back of an LS and it has 10 foot long spark plug wires that goes to a coil to relocation kit that highs down there, goes up through the, the distributor and goes to the valve covers. Yeah, something you would absolutely never see underneath the cowl. You would literally never see it. Plus, Whatever intake we had, I don't think it was going to work with that anyway. So all the retro stuff I had, including my Facebook Marketplace valve covers, oh, is just going to go back to being a regular LS. The problem is that you tried to make a, a newer 92 Corvette look old, and you just didn't want to do it. No. Well, and you think about what, what squeezes under the hood of a Corvette. Everything is super compact to the accessory drive system, to the low-profile intake, the, to the block hugger. Look at the LT over there. Yeah, well, that's the old LT that came out of it. Everything is super low profile. Yeah. I should have known. I should have known. I should do. Yeah. And um, all the stuff we've got here would work great on a truck. No. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. Uh, something we got plenty of room to work on. But for now, at least the mock-up block allowed us to figure out what would work and what wouldn't. And we pretty much figured out that nothing works some news is better than no news that's very true that's it's very true yep a couple other things got done i got um zeus connectors along the top of each of the rear quarter panels as well as this riveted on just little things here and there trying to get it done we're gonna go inside to eat we'll see you guys here in a little bit okay end of the night big thanks to rusty for coming out today and uh, getting our brake lines done. Nathaniel finished welding the part of the uh, hatch that we, we cut off, capped it off, finished uh, welding it, and we're gonna get that ready for paint next. I worked on Zeus fasteners today, got those done, got the rivets done. We did a lot of mock-up for the engine today, and as you can see, we got headers on there, we got it backed up to where the transmission actually sits because it's connected to the Corvette C-beam, so now we know exactly where this thing is gonna sit. Put on the uh, OLS1 oil pan that came off of Miles originally. I did notice that this almost comes out right into the suspension right there. That's going to be, we're not going to have a heater, but that's still going to be a really tight loop. I may have to shorten those, but that's why we mock things up. 
Couldn't do anything on the engine today because we're waiting on new rings to come in as well as a ring gap tool. So this sits for another day. But we did get this thing up on some uh, cribbing today, which makes it a whole lot easier to work underneath. We got the transmission underneath. We're gonna try to mock up some exhaust if we can. We got 11 days, folks. I'm really starting to doubt at this point if this car is gonna run. I, I hate it. We have one weekend left between now and LS Fest, and I just found out today there's, there's some scheduling conflicts that may or may not make this thing running possible by then. I think it's just gonna be, uh, well, I don't know. It might be a roller, it might not, I don't know. We'll see. But for now, it's looking pretty good, and we'll just do what we can. Come back out here tomorrow, we'll see you then. All right, this is turning out better than I thought. If you look at the, uh, well, if you look at all the goops and globs and the wavy way that this resin went on here, I was kind of concerned that we weren't going to be able to sand it down very smooth, but but it does. Got uh, 320 on the DA, takes it down nice and smooth. You can see like a couple shiny spots where there's some grooves that I just didn't get enough resin in. I'm not going to dig into that just to get it. It's close enough, and if you were to feel it, it's it's super smooth. So I'm pretty happy with that. So I'm gonna move on to the second one here and get this done. All you do is you just put it in there against these two pegs, mm -hmm. and then put what side you want against the riding wheel, and you just spin it. Okay. And then, and then how long did it take you to kind of get down to what you needed? This will probably do like a thousand. Really? Jeez, so it didn't take much. It, I mean, it's probably more than, probably takes a little longer. Just experiment with it. Okay. Go slow. Okay, so I'm checking the gap uh, piston rings right now. Um, already on to our, the second ring right now. Already did the first rings last night. Um, second rings look pretty good. Um, they're pretty close to what I want. They're just off. What are you gapping them at? Um, first ones I did 0 0.018. And then these ones I'm doing like a slightly bigger, like 0.019 or 2. Okay. So. You got yourself a nice little piston ring file over there too. Yeah, I'm good to that. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, we're using this piston ring filer to just kind of file them down little by little. And then it works pretty well. Yeah. I have for 25 bucks on Amazon. Is that what it cost? Yep. Well. Not perfect. Well. For 25 bucks to save an expensive set of rings, I think it's worth it. Yeah. Yeah. All right, making progress. If anybody wants to tell me that I cap my piston ring wrong, don't. <laughs> I don't want to know. Don't leave a comment below. What's the formula for gapping? The formula I found online is like 0 .004 per one inch of bore. So we have a four inch bore, which puts our minimum at around 0 .016. I went slightly above that, just in case. And then the second ring is always supposed to be yeah, just... Yeah, second ring is always supposed to be either equal to or slightly larger to allow airflow or something like that. So, so I don't know. We'll see. All right, it sounds good to me. I've never done it before, so if it blows up, this is probably why. <laughs> well, we got it on camera then if it does. Everybody, I figured I should probably bring you up to date. I've been showing you little bits and pieces over the last uh, probably two to three nights now 
a little bit here, a little bit there, just a lot of work and a lot less talking. And so I guess this is a good point to bring you kind of up to speed as to where we're at. These wings turned out amazing. The two coats of uh, fiberglass resin were pretty rough and wavy and shiny, and I was really concerned about how they would turn out. Never used it before. Not a technique I've ever tried, but I knew I needed to seal the, the wood regardless, so even if it was wavy, I, I was willing to try it, but this is amazing. Uh, the other thing I did, I decided to replace the wings. Actually, I bought another large wing. This is the new one. I've body, body worked them, filled in the old holes. I now have two large wings going back on here. One there, one there. And I also filled in the old holes and body worked it. And body worked the edges a little bit too because my uh, router messed up just a little bit. So I'm trying to smooth it out as best I can while not going too crazy. Right now, I've got the car completely covered up because I'm about to paint the inside. I uh, Raptor lined the inside of the car a few weeks ago. Never got a chance to actually get the, the thing painted. Just cleaned up the outer frame rail because there was all kinds of glue and fiberglass from the original Corvette body still on there. So smoothed all that out. I don't know why I did because this is not supposed to look nice, but it just bugged me. And uh, it, hi, etching primer cleaned and uh, etch primed the, uh, the roll bar as well. Uh, what else? Earlier tonight, you guys saw a few snippets of uh, us working on it, but we got all the pistons, actually Nathaniel got all the pistons installed and uh, connecting rods torqued down. Tomorrow, we'll get the heads on there and pretty much have a functional long block. Pretty excited about that. Oh, and before we, um, you didn't see this on camera, but just as we were installing the eighth piston, our compression tool broke. <laughs> But uh, in a never quit attitude, we carefully installed that thing by hand, one ring at a time, very carefully, and, uh, and got it in there. So now we're ready to install heads and valley plate. And we got uh, tomorrow, we got two new alignment tools coming in for the rear main seal and for the uh, front timing cover seal. And yeah, still got to finish body working this because we're going to go finish uh, painting this car. Probably, this is Friday as I'm taping this right now, and it's about midnight, so technically it's Saturday. No, I don't know what day it is. It's Friday. It's technically Friday now. Anyway, we're painting in a couple days, and, and uh, we got a red, white, and blue stripe. Well, red and blue to paint on top of the white. White, red, white, and blue there with the number one. Same thing with the hatch. Got to get this uh, mock-up block out of here. But that thing was extremely useful, though, because it told us everything we needed to know and some things we didn't even know we needed to know. So shout out to Speedway Motors for that. Got to mask this off because the dash is supposed to be black, not white. So I'm going to paint that at the same time I paint the inside because it's the same satin black. And this is that filler piece. And I think that gets you all cut up for now. Okay, here we go. Paint booth intact. Car all taped up, ready to go. Interior panels laid out. Everything, it doesn't want to get overspray on it, covered up. Fans, exhaust fans. Go ahead and get these going. All I gotta do is mix up some paint. Get this done, move on to the next thing.
Nathaniel's out here painting the back of the hatch. All the metal work has right. been welded and finished nicely. Looks like it was that way from the factory. No, it ah, doesn't. Not. Absolutely not. <laughs> okay, not exactly. But you know what's funny? We didn't even go to this detail on Miles. You realize that the uh, inside of the hatch on Miles is like half primer, half whatever. I thought we painted it. No, we never did. I thought we did. Nope, never did. That was one of those temporary jobs that became permanent. Anyway, we're uh, making this match the inside of the car. And inside here, here are all the panels. Inside the hatch as well. And wow, does the uh, camera really show the light spots. I gotta touch that up. I couldn't hardly get my paint gun on that wall right there, you see. But the rest of it is okay. This is the look we were going for. And I went ahead and just painted the inside of the doors just to, I don't know, just to give them some color. We're gonna make some kind of a door panel at some point, but for right now, <laughs> that's probably gonna end up being a temporary fix that becomes permanent. And we got the dash. So, and then in a couple days, I hope to have Adam back in here to finish the rest of the car. All right, moving on. Nathaniel's going to work on finishing the rest of that engine build as, as long as he's got tonight. Let's maybe put uh, some lifters in, bolt some heads down tonight, have a long block by the end of the night. I am going to work on this hood. One of my hood hinges broke. I'm going to re-weld that back on. But I'm also going to just position it on here because I've got hood hinges. I'm sorry. <laughs> hood pins that need to go right here and I need to get it uh, figured out. So uh, that way I can get the holes cut, get it body worked in time before Adam comes back because we don't have time to do body work when he gets here. He's just going to have to spray and go. Pretty cool. What setting are you at right now? 22. 22, first round.
good progress today. Got a long block over here, pretty happy about that. One thing I didn't realize is I uh, probably should have put the timing set on the front first, but I don't have a puller for that. I, I thought I did, but it doesn't fit, so I'm gonna have to get an actual bearing puller to get that thing off of there, so I'll do that tomorrow. Got this hood hinge re-welded on here, all lined up so that I could uh, get these hood pins on there. I haven't screwed them on yet because they're coming right back off so we can do body work and paint this thing probably tomorrow or the next day. But that was a fun little project. It needs to be adjusted just a little bit. I can't go any lower. I'm gonna have to re-thread that or, I don't know, I'll figure that out when, uh, once the, the body's on there because maybe the hood needs to come up a little bit and that should, that'll fix it by itself. But yeah, and right now I'm just sweeping, cleaning up. Just feels good to get all that done. And um, Raptor liner and satin black paint is all we're gonna do on the interior because it's a race car. It's not really meant to be a daily, although we plan on driving it long distances, but uh, comfort was not ever a factor in this car. So that's it for tonight. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Okay, next day, Saturday, August 31st. And uh, I wasn't actually going to film today. I just wanted to get busy and uh, get things done. We got five days to get this car ready. But I want to bring you in and kind of show you just the level of insanity that we've got to go through to fit a Monza body on a Corvette chassis, as well as wonky fiberglass fenders. I got the front end installed on the car again, trying to get the hood to fit within the border of the fiberglass. It's really, really tight. Plus the fiberglass was kind of flat and the hood arches. And so I'm just trying to space all this out. It's not pretty, but you see the spacers I've had to install. I'll fix that later, probably not. And uh, put something a little nicer looking on there. But the other thing I'm doing is you gotta have headlights on a car. And so I grabbed an old fiberglass backer panel from like a 75 to 77 Monza. And right now, the way that it sits where it normally mounts, which is kind of broken right there, it's just sitting on top of this little lip on the Corvette frame. And it's, I've got everything to the perfect height. This is where it needs to be spaced within the headlight buckets. The hood actually shuts and lines up fairly well. Not great, but great enough for fiberglass and for what this project is. But I got no way to secure this thing. So that's what I was gonna show you. That little lip right there is exactly one inch up. So I'm gonna cut that lip back, flatten it, cut off a section of uh, some scrap one by I had right here, weld that to the frame and then drill it and just put some nut zerts in this thing to, uh, to bolt that to and that should be good enough. But all this has got to come back off again so I can cut that, flap wheel it down, Cut this, weld this on there, drill a hole, nutsert it, put it all back together just to test fit it to see if it worked. And this is not really the kind of stuff I wanted to be messing with with five days left to go. Especially when I got an engine sitting here that's just a long block that hasn't fired up for the first time because my bearing puller tool right here was too fat to pull this uh, crank gear off. So Nathaniel's going to get that right now. And we don't paint the rest of the car for two more days. We gotta get an engine installed, at least some wiring, an interior installed, gauges, glass, no windshield. Anyway, this is the kind of stuff I'm working on right now. Progress is progress, right? Tent. Okay, it's really late at night. 
But here's what I was talking about hours ago in my attempt to mount these this headlight bucket behind the fiberglass nose. I've got this pinch wheel ground down. I got a one by block right here. I'll tack to the frame and then I will uh, drill a hole right there and put a nut set right there to bolt this thing down with a big washer to hold it. And same thing over there. In fact, you have a better view of what the, uh, the one by uh, block of box tubing looks like. So let me tack this thing in here and all this has got to come back off again so that I can Fully weld it, get the nut zert in there. Okay, these things are tacked in here for now. I got a couple nut certs right here. They go right in the hole, and I just tighten the nut cert in there. on there plus I'll finish well this repeat on the other side good to go and it works just like that and that's solid too I've only got it bolts down in those two locations but the way that's built super solid now I may go back at some point and use these mounting points here that used to mount to the old urethane front end on a stock Mazda but I don't know that these reach up to the lip on the fiberglass there yet. I don't think it quite reaches. So if I don't use that, I don't really see that as a problem. That is so solid that I could drive the car just like this and not have a problem. Anyway, I think that's it for the night. It's, uh, I think it's about 2 a.m. It's about time to head in. So see you tomorrow. Okay, it's the next day. I'm really not planning on doing a lot of filming today. I've just got to get stuff done on the car here. But I just got one task done that I was kind of excited about and I thought I would at least show you. We've always been concerned about this transition from the Monza dash to the Corvette dash and luckily it was pretty level and uh, got this piece of sheet metal, painted it the same color, riveted it in here. What do you think? I got turned out pretty good. The one thing I'm trying to decide right now is do I leave the rivets silver to kind of give it that race car look or do I paint them black to match? Haven't decided yet, but either way, pretty happy with that. At this point, we've only got four days to get this car done, and as you can see, we're a long way from finishing it. Not only does it not have an engine, but it's still in pieces on the engine stand. We have no glass installed. I still have to find and restore all the window trim pieces, finish installing the interior, reinstall all the body panels, and oh, by the way, we're not even done painting the car yet. Will we make it in time? We'll stay tuned and find out in the next episode. But until then, thanks for watching everyone. Take care.